Good morning, everybody. I'm hiding over here in the drums. If you're thinking, who is that person talking? My name is Jonathan. I'm one of the worship leaders here. It's so great to meet you guys, if I haven't met you already. Would you go ahead and stand up as we worship together? We're going to start things just a little bit slower than sometimes. We start here at St. Peter's in this service. But this is one of those songs that always speaks to my heart. I love this chorus because it has these words, which are perfect for a Sunday. Come awake. Come awake. Anybody have trouble waking up this morning? No? Come on, you're lying. Stop lying. All right. Well, it's great to have you guys here, and I hope you're awake. If you're not, by the time we're done with our time here together, I know you're going to be awake. But sometimes, I don't know about you, but I go through my week, and it's almost like there's a part of me that's asleep. There's a part of me that is not quite awake, not physically, but there's a part of me that's not awake to what God's doing around me. There's a part of me that's just not noticing what God's about. And maybe this song will remind you a little bit that, hey, wake up, wake up and look, look and notice. Hey, remember, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, right? If you're carrying around all of that, oh, maybe sadness, maybe some difficult decision, maybe you're having just kind of a rough week or you've had maybe a, a down morning already. Maybe you're just stressed as you come into church today. Maybe, maybe you're just feeling like, oh, okay, I'm here. I made it. But I'd almost rather be asleep. Maybe that's you. You can come awake right now together with your family, your friends, even with some strangers, maybe if you're new. And you can sing about the truth that Christ died for each of us, and he lives. He rose again. He lives for us as well. And we can also live for him. So let's go ahead and sing this together. Christ is risen.
Lord God, how great it is to be in this place right now because you are here and you are so worthy of our praise. Be in our midst, hear our prayer and praise, and continue, Lord, to strengthen our faith in you as we walk with you until that day when we will worship around your throne forever. In Jesus' name, we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Welcome. My name is Pastor Randy, a teaching pastor here at St. Peter. How good it is to be with you here in God's house of praise. Thank you to our worship team for that great kickoff to this time together. Uh, a reminder, there is drive-up communion this morning. If, if uh, you are at home and don't have communion elements, we'd love to see you out there and catch up sometime in this. I'm excited today because we start a new five-week message series talking about the blessing of a life verse. And our goal, if you don't have a life verse now, that's okay. Our goal, though, would be for every worshiper at St. Peter at the end of this series to have a life verse. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Also this morning, we are celebrating some new members who are coming into our midst here at St. Peter so we want to welcome them, embrace them, give them that right hand of fellowship. And then after the service, in a good Lutheran way, we have a bunch of goodies that are going to need a good home. And we can just welcome and celebrate them and meet them. Question. Uh, as we gather, uh, that I hope set the, the tone for our message today, our big idea. Do you have a green thumb? Why or why not? Are you good with plants and gardening? Go ahead, take a minute, share with those you are with, uh, and then we'll continue momentarily.
for my green thumbs. It's all right. God gifted you. He made you, right? Thank you so much for helping to beautify the areas where we worship around here and around your home and neighborhoods. What a blessing it is. Uh, for greenery, we know that it takes some intentional work and love and care and nurture for those plants or flowers to thrive. And you know, it's really the same way as followers of Jesus Christ. In order for us to thrive as his disciples, we need one key ingredient, and that is a life that is lived in here. And we're going to talk about that momentarily as I'll share with you my life verse and how it's been important to me as a guide. Uh, before our time in that word, hey, I want to welcome all of you here again. We have a check-in app. Uh, if you have the uh, phone, you can download this app. Uh, on this app, you can go down and click more. Uh, so not only can you check in with us, but you can enter your life verse and your story behind it, even a couple sentences, and then each week, we'd love to pick one or two of your life verses to put up on the screen so that we can bless each other, maybe help guide someone else who might be looking for a life verse and saying, you know, that, that life verse really fits my story, too. So check in with us. Let us know. You can, or you can go to our website, and you can check in and use your web. Uh, go to worship, and you can enter your life verse there as well. All right, let's go ahead now and welcome uh, our reader, Joyce, is going to come up and read the text that we'll be meditating on. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, our reading today is from Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. This is the word of the Lord. Now we have a life verse moment. Uh, AV team, do we have, yeah, this is the verse, life verse for Sarah Greiner. Uh, she and Micah are now in Italy uh, for a pre-COVID trip that got postponed because of COVID. Uh, so she wanted to share this verse with us and why it's been so meaningful to her. But Zephaniah three seventeen, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Sarah said this about these words, I have wrestled with identity and worth in my life. This verse reminds me of who I am and whose I am. I feel unworthy. When I feel unworthy, God says he is in my midst. When I feel like I am inadequate, God reminds me that I don't have to have it all together. He is the mighty one who saves. This passage assures me that God does not stand in judgment over me, but instead rejoices and sings loudly over me. Very powerful, and we love to hear yours as well. At this time, we have a great way that we can respond to all of God's grace and just how he shows up in our life again and again, and that is by worshiping him with our tithes and offerings. Uh, if you brought something with you, we'll have... Elsa is going to come up and help hold the basket for us this morning, or you can always follow the instructions on our website, or you can text an offering amount to 84321, but know that God will bless uh, the children who respond with joy to what he has done, and it also points to his great sacrifice and gift to us in Jesus Christ. During this, let's also sing. Just don't get it right 
Amen. Nothing is better than you. That is for sure. Hey, if we have any little ones in our midst, we have a special time in this service now just for you. If you would go over and stand by Miss Carrie over there by the white curtain, she is going to lead you to an age-appropriate time of your own in God's Word. have a question for you as we begin this new message series, My Life Verse, and it is simply, do you have a life verse? And what do I mean by a life verse? A life verse is simply a verse in the Bible, or it could be a group of two or three verses, that speak to you and your life story in a really personal way. And so when you recall this particular verse or verses, as they just speak into your life, it's almost like the Holy Spirit inspired these words of Scripture just for you. It could be a confirmation verse from years back, or it could be any verse or verses in here that have just been very special to you. How many, just quickly, show of hands, how many have a life verse? Good, and our goal at the end of this series is that every one of you would have a special verse to help guide. There are some benefits for having a life verse. One, it does act as a guide. We can always go back to it to have God speak into our day, whatever it's going on. It also gives you hope and direction. And the one I like a lot, too, is a life verse can also be a powerful witness that you can go to someone, and because it's your story, you can say, you know what, can I just share with you a few words that have really been important in my journey? And because they're your words, they are very apt to listen. And it's a great way for you to get the word of God into those conversations. If you don't have a life verse, I know that it can seem daunting for you to sit there and think, you know what, but there are over 31,000 verses in the Bible. Where do I go or where do I even start to find one? Well, to help you out a little bit, I've put together the top six least likely life verses from the Bible. And I thought I'd share that with you just to help narrow down the field for you a little bit. The first one is from Exodus 23, do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Meh. Right? So this is holy scripture, right? It's spirit breathed, but maybe not the most applicable life verse for you. Or how about Proverbs 31? Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter in soul. A loose Pastor Null translation would say, take him to Benny's. <laughs> right? Give him some strong drink. Right? Maybe not the best life verse, though it is biblical, right? Or how about Proverbs 26? Like a dog that returns to its vomit. <laughs> Nice image. Is a fool who repeats his folly. Or maybe it's Isaiah 20, verse 2. God told Isaiah, loose the sackcloth from your waist and the sandals from your feet. And so Isaiah, this is in the Bible, Isaiah walked naked and barefoot for three years. Maybe not the most appropriate life verse, especially if you're in confirmation. That's PJ 13 pushing the R needle a little bit. 
Or maybe it's Ecclesiastes 12, 12. Of the making of many books, there is no end, and much study wearies the flesh. Now, why isn't that one of our verses for the family verse of the week in our Christian day school, right? Much study wearies the flesh. Keep the homework light, teachers, right? Biblical. Or how about this last one from Jesus in Luke 12? Soul, you have material assets laid up for years. Relax. Eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> In the next verse, Jesus looks at that life plan and says, fool. So probably not a good life verse to pick either. So there you go. I've narrowed the field by six for you. Uh, but what we're going to do these next five weeks is you're going to hear from four different pastors and our own seminarian, Ted Fisher, and we're each going to share with you our life verse and why it has been so important for us. Now, before I reveal my life verse, I have to tell you that it is my confirmation verse, but it's not the verse I wanted. I wanted a different verse in the Bible, but my mom said you should really have these verses. And you know how moms can be persuasive, right? <laughs> okay, well, these are fine. Thank you. <laughs> but now God has a plan and I can just see it. My life verses are from Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Oh, the happiness of the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked or stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of scoffers. Rather, his delight is in the Torah of the Lord. And on his Torah, he meditates day and night. We're going to start with verse 1 here because you notice in these two verses the person who is truly happy in this life does two things. There's a negative action and a positive action. The negative, he does not walk or stand or sit in that company. The positive action, rather, his delight is in God's word. Verse 1, did you notice as we read through it that there's a narrowing? It goes from a very general, wicked to sinners, to ultimately scoffers. Scoffers in the Bible are those who openly mock God. They make fun of his word, they make fun of his ways, and they even scoff and make fun of those who follow him. Their only authority in life is themselves. Did you also notice in these verses a very, very dangerous double digression? We could draw two down arrows on both margins of this verse. Notice how it goes from walking to standing to sitting. And then notice how it also goes from counsel to way to actually seek. See, this dangerous, dangerous path starts by simply walking in their counsel, meaning we are listening to them. We are heeding their words and giving them weight in our lives. And, and from there, it digresses to now we are actually standing in their way, meaning that we are on the same path. We are party to their ways, and we are on the same road now together. And then the worst of the worst is now it digresses to actually sitting in their very seats. Meaning we have now become one of them. We have joined their assembly and now do the scoffing ourselves. 
It's a profound and dangerous influence here, isn't it? In our days, we might hear something like this, you are your friends. Or birds of a feather flock together. Or your friends are like elevators. They can take you up or they can also take you down. Someone has said, show me your closest friends, your closest seven friends, and I will show you your life. Paul says it like this in 1 Corinthians 15. It's just the way it is. Bad company ruins, ruins, destroys good morals. That if we continuously put ourselves in the company of wicked, sinful, and scoffers, there will be an osmosis. It reminds me of something we used to enjoy doing when we were younger in a lower central Michigan. When it was winter, sometimes our dad would take us downhill sledding. And he had one of those from his childhood, one of those really big wooden toboggans. And he'd put it in the back of his Jeep CJ7. It almost went all the way up to the dash. And he would take us to a hill in Holt, Michigan called Dead Man's Hill. That's a sledding hill, right? Dead Man's Hill. And at the bottom there was a pond that was usually frozen. But maybe that's how it got its name. But what I remember is we'd be sitting on the top of that hill and my dad would make all three of his kids pile on that toboggan first and, and dad would sit in the back and he would plant his size 12 boots firmly in the snow. And then when it was time to go, we would kind of start itching and moving that thing to crest over that hill. And, and if my dad did not feel good about it, he only had about two or three feet to put his boots back in the snow and stop it. Because after just two or three feet, that thing was going down the hill and we were all going with it. It's that same power and influence and downward pull of bad company that the psalmist talks about in verse 1. That the power, the lure of, of those who are wicked or sinful or scoffers, man, is it powerful to pull us down we go farther than we ever thought we would go it goes faster than we had ever imagined and we find ourselves doing things in groups that we wouldn't do with our morals on our own and maybe that downhill pressure is starting to dab in pornography or, or maybe it's starting to steal or shoplift or, or maybe it's getting into gaming and the gambling and just try it, you'll like it. Or, or maybe it's into reckless driving, right? There's a bunch of teenagers in a car. Go, 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 go! Or maybe it's drinking or drugging or, or getting pulled into a gossip circle. And man, does the power, once we start down that hill, it gets harder and harder to stop it. In Vicarage, when I was a student pastor in small town Kansas, one of the privileges I had as a guy who was about as green as it gets was going to a 30-day inpatient treatment center for AA and NA. And I got to sit in the very back of this large classroom with my yellow notebook, just taking notes on each day what the counselors would teach. And one of the phrases, I remember the counselors saying again and again to these struggling people with addictions who just wanted to be clean and sober was this. You have to change playgrounds, and you have to change playmates. Because if you are trying to be clean and sober, but still in those circle of friends and family who are pulling you down, you will not stay clean 
or sober. And it's the exact same influence that the psalmist is warning us about here. That see, rather the happiness of a man, rather than being pulled down that direction with bad company, he now says, rather, his delight, his joy, his pleasure is in the Torah of the Lord, and on his Torah he meditates day and night. And our English translations, I can't stand how they translate it. They translate it delights in the law of the Lord. It makes it sound like we're just meditating on a bunch of do's and don'ts. And how defeating and discouraging that would be. But the Hebrew word there is literally Torah. It means instruction or teaching. So his delight is in the teaching, the instruction of the Lord, meaning it's everything in here. It's both law, but it's also all of the gospel. The one who delights in his teaching, his instruction, his Torah. And just look at what the Psalms say themselves about God's Torah. It's perfect. It's blameless. And look what it does in our lives. It revives the soul. And even a soul needs a little jump this morning, this week. You ever read your U version verse or portals of prayer, your Our Daily Bread or another devotional, and, and it was just something after you sat with even that one verse or verses that just lifted your spirit? That's what it says. It revives the soul. It reaffirms, just as verse 1 today, happy are those who walk in it, true happiness. Being in this is better than a thousands of pieces of gold. That's a lot of money. But that doesn't even compare to what's in here. And his Torah is true. In a world today that is so dark and so confused, we have truth. And I love this last one. Those who love it, those who love his Torah, have great peace. I'm reminded of one of our brothers in Christ who recently passed, Scott Snively, a husband to our fourth grade teacher here, Trudy. And this past Tuesday was his funeral, his life celebration in Jesus Christ. And one of the things that just has stuck vivid with me is Pastor Micah, for his message, brought up Scott's Bible. And it was beaten and battered and twice as thick as it was originally, and it was really worn out and marked up and had all sorts of inserts in it. And that image of this man who delighted in the Torah of the Lord comes to mind. And the phrase that says, a Bible that's falling apart belongs to someone who isn't. His delight is in the Torah of the Lord. And on his Torah, his teaching, he meditates day and night. The Hebrew word there for meditate is hagah. Hagah. You know what it means? It's literally like an animal chewing its cud. <laughs> Have you ever seen a cow eat? Right? So you take God's word and it's saying you gnaw on it. And then you ingest it. And then you regurgitate it, and you gnaw on it some more, and you ingest it, and then you regurgitate it again. And as you're doing this, it's literally becoming a part of you. Here's what Martin Luther said it can do for you, for me, in his large catechism. Martin Luther said, nothing is so powerful against the devil and the world and our flesh and all evil thoughts as to occupy oneself with God's word, to speak about it and meditate on it in a way just as Psalm 1 verse 2 calls those blessed who meditate on it 
day and night. The psalm in verse 3 closes with quite an image this morning of the person who doesn't go down that dangerous path but just has this love for God's word and, and let it become part of them. Look at this image in verse 3. That person is like a tree planted by canals of water. It gives its fruit and its season, and no matter what's going on around it, its leaf does not wither. And all that he does, he makes prosper. Right? The person who's delighting in chewing this cud is like that tree that just has this constant water supply and nutrients pouring into the soul and the heart and the mind. And as the Holy Spirit works through that, it produces the fruit of the Spirit in one's life. A love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And so that no matter what kind of drought conditions are going on around us in this culture today, no matter what kind of storms of life might come and batter that tree, it stands. Because it has that continual nutrient flowing into its life. And everything that that person does prospers because it's the blessedness of a life given here. I hope you can see now my life verse and, and how it has spoken to my life and continues to do so. It gives that honest warning at the beginning and then it, it gives us those words of encouragement and that that image of a life in Jesus and his word of this evergreen producing tree. It's about the richness of a life spent here. Amen. Later during our upper room time, I have three questions from my life verses to apply today and take it home with you and, and hopefully it will help speak to you and also encourage you on the blessing of a life verse. At this time, let's go ahead and come before our Heavenly Father, knowing the truth of His Word, His Torah, that we are sinners, we don't have it all together, but there's also a cross that we can go to for full forgiveness and freedom from any bondage. Would you please confess these words together on the screen with me? Lord God, I come before you today with nothing to hide. You've heard everything I've said and seen everything I've done. You even know my thoughts. You know that every day my life is filled with disobedience, poorly chosen words, and missed opportunities. Forgive me, God, for the sake of your son Jesus, who lived the perfect life that I could never live and sacrificed himself in my place. Amen. And know that the blood of Jesus has once again just covered all of your sins and my sins, and in him we are loved, we are forgiven, and we are free. Go in that peace and assurance. Amen. At this time, we uh, have our upper room time, and we have someone that's going to come up and help introduce that for us or not i'll do it then <laughs> it's a moment when we have holy communion but there's plenty of time here uh, we want you to worship and reflect with those you are with uh, when you are ready you can come up and make a circle around the table up here and we'll come around and give communion we have a prayer wall and a prayer station back there if you would like to just go sit and have some prayer time with god in the back of the room, we have two baskets. If there's a prayer that I can pray for you later or a God sighting to celebrate, uh, go ahead and write those. We'll gather those and we'll, we'll pray for those and celebrate those later. 
The questions from my life verse will also be on the screens for you to just sit with and continue to make this a part of your day and week and walk with God. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If you are a baptized Christian and you share this belief in Jesus' words that it's his body and blood for our forgiveness, we welcome you to his table.
We are very excited now to welcome some uh, new members, new family into our midst here at St. Peter. Uh, so if I could please have Ann and Bob, uh, Kristen, Christy, and Catherine, if you would please come forward at this time. We have uh, some promises to exchange uh, with you as your family of God, your brothers and sisters in Christ, and also we want to just pray God's continued blessing upon you. So please come forward. Welcome. What a joy this is. And we have sheets to, let me get you some sheets so that you don't have to come up with words off the top of your head. We have extra sheets if anyone else wants to just jump up here to become a member. Hey. Right? Hey, <laughs> Mike is out of town. He's on the other side of the ocean. We can do lots of things now, right? <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I now uh, ask you, do you believe that the Bible, including both Testaments, is the inspired word of God and that the teachings, the doctrine of our Lutheran church, as you have learned them as are in the small catechism, are indeed faithful and true to scriptures? If so, then say, I do. I do. do you intend to live according to God's word and in faith, word and deed, remain faithful to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and even unto death? And do you intend to continue steadfast in this full life in Christ and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? And do you desire to become a member of this congregation? I do. And will you support the work our Lord has given us to do with your prayers and your gifts? If so, then say, I will with the help of God. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, we have heard their promises. Now it's time for us to also give promise to them. I, I now ask all of you, you have heard the faith of these men and women who desire to become members of this congregation. Will you promise to receive them warmly, love them as fellow followers of Jesus, and encourage them to grow in their faith? If so, then say we will. 
And do you recognize that the faith they have confessed is the same faith that we have? If so, then say we do. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge you publicly that you are members of the Missouri Synod and of this congregation. And please join with us in all the blessings of life together our Lord has given to us as church. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, Jeff and Michelle, are you here? They have a special verse that they would like to read over you. Uh, and then we would love to hold our hands and have a blessing over you. Eight verses from Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please hold out a hand of blessing over them? Lord God, we just give you so much thanks for these sons and daughters of the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, for their membership here among us, your body. You have given them special gifts and the calling. You have a great purpose and plan for their life. Lord, please help us uh, to know how you have gifted them so that we can release them to use those gifts to serve your body that other people might also know Jesus Christ as Lord. It's in all of these things that we ask in his name. Amen. Hey, congratulations. We welcome you to the St. Peter family. We welcome you to the St. Peter family. Thank you. You can go ahead and be seated. We now have a mission partner video from Norway, our friends in Norway that we partner with. So could we please, no, we do not have the mission partner video <laughs> from Norway. Hey, let's, uh, let's go ahead and go to our God now in prayer. Uh, let me check the baskets. To oh, you have them? Okay. Thanks, Lou. That's okay. Uh, let's go ahead now and go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Lord, we just give you so much thanks that you are a speaking God, and you have even word that those words would be written down for us, words that will never perish, spoil, or fade, and that in those words we get to know you and your love for us and our dear Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to always delight in your word that we would walk in it and be these incredibly fruitful trees for your glory and kingdom. We also bring these other requests to you right now, Lord. We pray uh, for a husband, a Jim, who is, that he would have a good week uh, at early voting. He is an elector judge and is nervous about the new uh, equipment. We also give you thanks, God, for Pastor Julio's eye surgery and for the recovery. We also pray that, God, that you would grant healing to the family and friends who are ill, those who are also struggling with illness. We pray, Lord, for health uh, upon uh, Rosina and the baby in her womb. We also pray, Lord God, celebration for Jerry Grant, who was at the first service, and tomorrow is her 99th birthday. Lord, what a blessing that is, and just continue to guide her in your ways. Lord, these prayers and all the other prayers on our hearts and minds we give to you, and to these prayers we add the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. Uh, at this time, we invite our little ones, if you want to come forward and grab an instrument, to be ready to make some noise. Uh, and would you stand? We have a new family blessing that we're going to ask you as we prepare this to speak over those you are gathering with. If you would please stand and, and get close together and speak these words from Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. Very good. Good, good. 
good girl. Find something they know. It's a good one. Okay, are we ready for some God sightings? Celebrate God's work in our midst. Uh, celebrating uh, and helping a sister clean her classroom at Christian Liberty Academy upon her retirement uh, was seen in students that were once in her Bible class now came to chat as they are now talking, taking their a reason of being teachers of your Christian men and women. So students who came back and were blessed and are now going out. Woo! A prayer was answered. I passed my glucose test and don't have gestational diabetes. Praise God. Amen. For two turtle doves, uh, God's creation that came to the backyard, uh, they were just beautiful. So praise God for his marvelous creation. And for our new members, praise God for them and their commitments and membership at St. Peter. Uh, and I have one more. Uh, at our first service to this morning, our 830 service, the St. Peter class of 1972. 50 years ago, came back uh, to worship with us this morning, their 50th anniversary. Micah and I weren't even born yet in 1972, but praise God, that was awesome. Hey, let's go ahead and wrap up our time together just giving God more of our praise. Let's sing. If you want to stay up here and play during the last song, you can, okay? Okay. <laughs> 